What's up, hustlers? Check in, check in. As always, we're going to wait just a few moments for YouTube to send out post notifications. Appreciate everybody that's bearing with me from a second ago when we had just a little bit of technical difficulties. But as you know, it happens in entrepreneurship. We're going to keep rolling with it. Um, what I want to talk to you about in this video, you could tell by the title. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, addressing what we're going to talk about because people will see as they uh, come in and read the title. But why people with criminal records go on to become the best entrepreneurs right so without further ado let's go ahead and start this video and we're going to talk about it let's get into it yo yo shout out to jt hustles for teaching people how to become entrepreneurs on youtube and all over social media continue the good work my brother jt hustles <laughs> i choose not to be a common man it's my right to be uncommon if i can I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to look hand to mouth. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the stale calm of utopia. I will never cower before any master, nor bend to any threat. It's my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid, to face the world boldly and say, this I have done. All right, hustlers. So I appreciate everybody that's tuning in. I know it's pretty early, uh, so I, I'm going to be respectful of your time. I want to kick some game to you guys. We're going to start it off with a testimony because I get testimonies all the time. But this is a testimony that I wanted to share uh, with everybody because this is what it's all about. This is why I upload and things of that nature. So uh, what you're seeing on the screen right now, after doing 10 years in federal prison, I came home and while scrolling on YouTube, I ran across a lot of your videos. And then I joined you on Instagram. Uh, this was actually an Instagram DM. Um, and continued to watch the content that you was putting up. And now I'm successful doing independent career out of my own vans. Salute to you in the free game that you give. So I appreciate you uh, for sending me that. Uh, for those of you that follow me on Instagram or saw it on the community tab, uh, I already made this post, but I'm just uh, restating the facts. Uh, this video in particular that, that uh, I'm about to be kicking, as you guys can tell by the title, this is for anybody who has a criminal record, has been holding them back, or you have a loved one with a criminal record and has been holding them back. So if you don't fall into one of those categories, you yourself don't have a criminal record, nobody you really care about have a criminal record, this may not be the video for you. However, I do know that I do have a particular audience within uh, my total number of subscribers who fall into that category and this is who it's for. So I want to give you some traits because historically you can see there are millionaires and billionaires who have criminal records. So I want to tell you to hopefully motivate you on why people that have a little smudge, a little infraction on their criminal record usually go on to become the very the very best entrepreneurs the first thing that i think uh defines those men and women and before we get into this list smash that thumbs up button if you haven't done so already comment where you're watching this from any questions comments concerns you have put it in the live chat we get to that at the end also disclaimer here i'm not uh the spokesperson for all gangsters criminals ex-felons anything like that those of you that know my story uh i'm not ashamed of it um i grew up as, as just a small time church boy and uh i was really sheltered from my father's side of the family uh for many years until i was an adult and then realized that that is why because uh, my mom was big time in the church uh my dad's side of the family was really really out there like you name it uh it was going down as far as like you know just gangster activity criminal activity whatever the case may be so my mom really sheltered me from that as a child but as an adult when i had the freedom to go expose myself to that um i realized that was why so i can really empathize with you i know a lot of people um uh, they're my personal family members i love them to death we talk on a regular basis um but they have things on their record and they still in spite of that uh have become super duper successful right super duper successful so that's why uh i feel qualified to be the one to make this video for you because i don't see nobody else on youtube talking about it one fearless right the people that i know whether you consider yourself a gangster an ex-felon a criminal whatever the case may be you could take that same skill set that you have that those same attributes that you have apply them into entrepreneurship if you say, I don't know how, I wrote a complete book 
telling you different business ventures that you could check out. Uh, it's available on Amazon. It's linked down below. But hey, if you already got a business idea, you can roll with that. But for the benefit of those people who say, I don't even know what business to start. That's why I wrote this book to help felons become legitimate entrepreneurs so you can no longer have the excuse of saying, I don't know what to do uh, to clean my life up as an entrepreneur. So uh, this eliminates that excuse. But the fearlessness and the confidence that I see um, in the traditional felon, gangster, criminal, whatever you consider yourself to be is a powerful attribute that will make you be a very successful entrepreneur. I can't tell you how many people I personally meet, talk to on a weekly basis. Uh, and these people have clean records, right? N not even as much as a speeding ticket on their record. Um, but they're, they're cowards for lack of a better word. Like they're afraid to do anything. I, I personally got a friend who has a hundred thousand dollars in his savings account. And, uh, and won't invest any of it. It's, that's his emergency fund, if you will. And, um, he, he does have a 401k plan. He does work a traditional nine to five job. So whatever the company provides for his retirement, he does invest in that. But, uh, he really wants to be an entrepreneur, but he's just so afraid of losing any of that money. What I found is the fearlessness and the confidence, uh, that a lot of people who have done a little dirt in their life have, uh, once you reform yourself and you utilize that skill set in a positive way, you're going to be leaps and bounds ahead of the average person because the average person in my experience when it comes to entrepreneurship they're so scared how i'm gonna make money how i'm gonna get my, my health insurance how i'm gonna pay my bills not saying that these are legitimate concerns but uh hustlers entrepreneurs however you look at yourself these people say okay yes i know this is something that i need to address but it's not going to stop me from trying to accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish. And you'll be surprised how many people who, unlike you, if you're somebody like that that's watching this video, uh, suffer from, they have knowledge. I know very smart people, people with master's degrees, PhDs, people that have money. Like I said, I got a personal friend of mine that got a hundred grand at least, a hundred grand in a savings account. Right. And, and is afraid to invest it because they're afraid to lose a thousand dollars of that or two thousand dollars of that um, because, you know, they've been working since they was a teenager and saving money. Next point, though, good ex criminals, right, are people with criminal records that go on to become very uh, good entrepreneurs. And you guys know I'm talking about legitimate entrepreneurship here. Uh, I think that there's enough legitimate money out there. You don't got to do anything shady or anything like that, right? I think that uh, there's enough clean money, if you will, out there that you don't have to risk your life, the, the life of your loved ones, or anything like that just to make money. Uh, but good ones, good people who do have a criminal background are emotionless or emotionless decision makers, right? They make decisions based off of the facts. Lots of times it might just be based off of the numbers, the money, whatever the case may be. Um, that's another differentiating factor that you may not recognize if you're somebody that's like that and say, I don't have a lot of money and I don't have a lot of knowledge uh, and you don't view what you do have as a skill in that, like I said, I know people with money, with formal education, right? With a network, but they have a wife, they have kids, right? They have, they help take care of their moms. All of these, again, I'm not downplaying you if you're somebody that's watching this video who says I have all of these responsibilities. I do understand that that is important. But what I have found from my personal, I'm telling you about my own family, right? My own family member, talk to them every day. Um, when it comes to business decisions, right? It's all facts. There's no emotions involved. And what you'll find is the most successful business people out there, right? They don't let too many emotions play into their business decisions. How it would apply to that is that your first business might become like your baby, right? So you, you stuck that out for years and years and you finally start making money and getting traction. And if the time ever comes where you need to sell that business, 
you need to restructure that business or you need to do anything that you don't really want to do, but it's necessary to do in that business based off of the numbers, right? There's plenty of people who say, you know, I just will keep doing it the old school way, right? A good example of that is I know a lot of businesses, mom and pop stores, since I'm uh, located in, in the Carolinas, um, as you guys can tell, MSIMobileMarketers.com, which is below me, that's my marketing company. There's a, a even cities, cities down here i talked to uh city city uh, council members or a city council member this weekend and uh part of our discussion was how the city does outdated marketing so there's a lot of major cities and business people alike who are not getting the results that they would like because their marketing efforts are let me put it in the newspaper right um let me put it on the city website uh, let me put it on the channel, whatever that nobody ever watches channel and see if that gets traction for my business. Right. So if you uh, are somebody who is an emotionless decision maker as it pertains to business, you're going to find that you're going to excel beyond your peers when it comes to entrepreneurship. I'm going to pause here. Appreciate all 53 people that's watching this live. Hit that thumbs up button. Comment where you're watching this from. For those of you who missed the intro, I'm telling you this video in particular, I'm going to be honest with you, may not be for everybody. This video is for you if you have a criminal history. Now you're trying to, to become an entrepreneur or just trying to become successful and uh, people are still treating you as if you're that same person that just committed that crime. Uh, and the second people primarily that I want to see this video are those people who have a loved one who has a little something on their record and they've been struggling to get to a better situation. So if you're somebody who doesn't have a little something on your record and trying to uh, better your life, or if you don't know anybody personally that you care about, right, then this might be uh, a video that you're not really interested in. But for those of you that are here and watching, appreciate you being here. Put your questions, comments, concerns in the live chat, and you guys know that we're going to address it here uh, in just a second, right? Uh, also, again, I'm going to share the testimony with you guys again. Uh, because these are the kind of testimonies that I think people need to see. This, this is not saying JT Hustles is so good that he helped people do all of this stuff. Because I personally don't even believe it's me. Because I put out the information. And for every one person that utilizes it, it's probably a 100 or so people who watch the video and not do anything with it. So, like I always tell you guys, knowledge is not power. The application of knowledge is power. So, if... Uh, you ever get value out of my videos and apply it and make money, uh, that's just a testament to the grace of God and your own hustle, not me. But I do want to share these testimonies with you from time to time so you guys can actually see uh, it's not just JT Hustles or other people that you commonly see on the channel. Uh, this is one of my subscribers and... Uh, I'll briefly read it again. After doing 10 years in the federal prison, I came home and while scrolling on YouTube, I ran across a lot of your videos. Then I joined you on Instagram and continued to watch the content that you was putting up. And now I'm successful doing independent courier out of my own van. Salute to you and the free game that you give, right? And I'm not saying that everybody out here has to become an independent courier because of that testimony or because uh, that was my entrepreneurial foundation. Like I said below, link below is a book. Uh, that I wrote specifically for felons to help them become legitimate entrepreneurs. But I wanted to run back through that for the benefit of the people who may have just now gotten in here. Uh, but the next attribute that I believe helps people, since we're talking about why people with criminal records going to become the best entrepreneurs, because wherever you're located now, talking to those people with the ref record specifically, maybe the family members, the friends, the employers in your small town, in your bubble, or even if you're in a major city, wherever your bubble is, they might treat you as if because of whatever you did three, five, 10, 20 years ago, um, you're, you're less than somebody who did not do that, right? Now, I'm not here to justify what anybody has ever done, uh, nor am I here to condemn you for anything that you've done. What this video is for is just trying to tell you about the attributes that many of you may possess. If you don't possess all 10 of them that I'm going to talk about, maybe you got a few of them and encourage you to try to become an entrepreneur, legitimate entrepreneur at that, right? Next thing that I have on the, on this, the third attribute that I've seen from just the people that I know per, uh, personally as to why people with criminal records going to become the best entrepreneurs is they have rules 
and they enforce them, right? They're very disciplined people. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs are undisciplined, right? So uh, they'll hear being an independent courier makes money. So they'll start becoming an independent courier. And then they'll hear appliance repair makes money. So they'll stop that and start appliance repair. Then they'll say, then they'll hear cell phone repair makes money. They stop both of those, they're going to start cell phone repair. Then they hear uh, starting an e-commerce Shopify store makes money. So they stop that and start that. So they never really complete anything. They don't have any discipline. Now, I am a firm believer in multiple streams of income. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't do this and do that because I personally am somebody who does multiple things on a consistent basis. But you got to put some kind of structure in place. Uh, put some kind of rules in place and enforce them, right? And have discipline. Uh, one rule that I have, uh, and this is my personal rule, not saying that everybody out there has to adopt it, but just to show you guys that I actually practice what I preach. Um, I personally won't invest in anything that I don't understand. That's one rule that I have, regardless of how much money you tell me you can make in it. Uh, if I can't do research and understand what I'm about to put my time and money in, I won't put my time and money in it. And secondly, uh, the minimum return of, on, on investment, and this is on a monthly basis, has to equal out to what my bills are. So uh, you guys know I pay rent right now, rent and utilities, right? So if I'm going to invest in anything, this is just JT Hustles. You can't just tell me that it makes $30,000 a day or a million dollars a day or whatever it is that it's saying you can make a day. Um, it's got to be something that I understand. And on a monthly basis, it has to at least cover uh, whatever my overhead is. So whatever your overhead is, if you wanted to adopt it, if you have car insurance, car payment, rental mortgage, light bill, water bill, whatever it is, uh, that's what I'm saying. So that's just my personal uh, well, two of my personal rules that I have when an opportunity comes my way, can I understand it on a monthly basis at a bare minimum, will it cover my overhead? Now, of course, I want it to be significantly higher than that, but these are just bare minimums for me, right? So I'm going to move on. Point number four that I have here as well is uh, they protect their own, right? I, I have a, a auntie who says that her sons are loyal to a fault, right? So they, they are in and out of the system from time to time. Um, but it, it all goes back to loyalty. Uh, now, tying that into entrepreneurship, uh, I want you to think about your loyalty in the street world or wherever you are now or wherever you used to be. Um, adopt that same loyalty towards your brand, right? So towards your brand and people that support your brand, whether it's your customers, your clients, your subcontractors, your employees, give them the same kind of loyalty that you would give people in the streets and you will find that people can notice that, right? Believe it or not, right? And, and once I say this, a lot of people will think no duh, but then once I look at their businesses and talk to them about trying to help them make a little extra money, their actions don't say no duh. Uh, people aren't stupid, right? People aren't stupid. So people can understand if you're just trying to sell them a product or service and make a dollar off of them versus if you genuinely have a product that can help them and you're going to benefit from it, right? So the nature of the beast, just simple economics is, of course, there's buyers and there's sellers. But beyond that, right, your consumers can tell if you really care about them or not. So by having that loyalty there, right, uh, people will feel that. That's why certain brands do well in a recession, Right. So uh, if the economy crashes today, which depending on what what economists you follow, they might think that we're already in a recession. But depending on who you follow, if the economy crashes today, none of us need a Coca-Cola, but people will still buy Coca-Colas. Right. That's not something you need when the economy crashes. But big brands like that will still thrive. Right. And that's because you can see how they're loyal to their brand and their marketing efforts and just how they operate as a business. Uh, tip number five that I have for you, if you or somebody you love has a criminal record and they want to become an entrepreneur, I hope this video motivates them and maybe this highlights some character traits that they didn't even know that they have, is they're willing to go to the extreme measures, but only when necessary, right? But only when necessary.
right? Because they understand that war is expensive. I'm going to give you guys um, a personal account that recently happened to me. Well, it happened New Year's, so uh, it's not super recent. But uh, the situation was that around New Year's, of course, people like to have a good time to bring in the New Year's. So there are a lot of police checkpoints going on. Right. So I was stopping the police checkpoint. Didn't have my seatbelt on. It is what it is. I get pulled over. Right. While I'm pulled over. Granted, the checkpoint is for drunk driving uh, for people that's having too much fun on New Year's. Right. Uh, I see other people who uh, I'm just going to say don't look like me. Right. Other people who don't look like me, um, they get stopped as well because they're stopping traffic in both directions. So I see people who don't look like me get stopped, have no seatbelt on, and get weighed through. So I say, okay, maybe they're getting a verbal warning. I'm going to get a written warning. Uh, so, okay, it is what it is. As long as I get a warning, now that I'm looking at other people uh, do the same thing that I did, and, uh, and it goes by. But long story short, um, I get a $200 seatbelt ticket. So immediately, I'm reaching out to, to my network and my resources and um, have an action plan together in less than 24 hours. But... Um, it would have been an extreme measure. Like it, it was going to be more than just let's beat this ticket. It was going to be, yo, let's highlight this entire city and show the, how they treat people that look differently in this city. Now, the reason why I didn't do that is because by my estimate, it would, it would have been around a $20,000 bill that I would have kicked out. Now it wasn't that I didn't have the $20,000, but as somebody who's transitioning into real estate and tech, there are much better things that I could spend my $20,000 on other than beating a seatbelt ticket that's not going to take any points off of my license and highlighting a city that I honestly never, ever have to go back to if I don't want to, right, ever again. So uh, the point that I'm making here, good hustlers, gangsters, criminals, whatever you care uh, to classify yourself as, they are willing to go to extreme measures. So that in that moment, I was ready to, hey, let's do it. Attorneys get the media involved. Like, let's really highlight, make this a big, a big deal. And it is what it is. But they also have like it ties back into that discipline. Uh, understand that it's only when necessary. Right. Understand it only when it's necessary as an entrepreneur. Uh, again, I'm giving you guys my personal situation just as a reference point. You have to know when to pick your battles. Right. Would I have won that battle? I'm 90 plus percent confident that I wouldn't have paid the $200 ticket. I would have got a lot of bad press for the city. Uh, the I don't know if the officer would have lost their job or not. I wouldn't have cared. But once I compare apples to apples, do I want to spend $20,000 to avoid paying $200? Right. And the same thing goes in your business as well. So uh, and, and that goes back to you got to be able to make a uh, emotionless decisions. Right. Making emotionless decisions. So the big point there is when it, it is necessary. Right. So if, if the dynamics were different, if my daughter was in the car, if things would have went a little bit, a little bit further than what they went. Absolutely. But uh, examining the situation, I said, you know what? Hey, it, it is what it is. It's not worth saving two hundred dollars and spending out twenty thousand just to, you know, destroy some country town that nobody will ever go to anyway. Right. Next point. Resourceful people with criminal records go on to become the best entrepreneurs because they are resourceful. There are lots of people who say I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that when I get my tax money. When I hit the lottery, when somebody die and leave me some money or, you know, my palm is itching. So somebody just going to give me some money. And those people never, ever do or most of those people never, ever do what they ever say that they're going to do. Right. So maybe you were resourceful in another light previously. But now fast forward to today, you can be resourceful and think of how can I raise money? Right. I posted another hustle law on Instagram. If you're not following JT Hustles on Instagram, go go follow JT Hustles on Instagram. And I told you guys, if you can't pre-sell it, you can't resell it. And oftentimes that's true, right? So if you have a banging business idea 
and you're able to articulate from start to finish the concept, the marketing, who is it for, right? There are crowdfunding websites um, out there if you don't know anybody personally that will back your vision, right? So whether it's being resourceful when it comes to raising money, whatever other infrastructure you need outside of just the finances, right? Uh, these sorts of people tend to be highly resourceful, right? Highly resourceful. Um, moving on, they're relentless, right? They're relentless. Uh, what I mean by relentless is that they, they don't easily give up on something. And in entrepreneurship, um, you will find that statistics say that uh, most entrepreneurs aren't going to make it to their fifth year and then their 10th year and so on and so forth. Uh, I've recently crossed my five year mark. Things are still going strong and we're actually building uh, out even uh, bigger infrastructures and things that you guys will see as you stay tuned. But you got to be relentless to be a successful entrepreneur. If you guys haven't caught on yet, and I got three more points, then I'm going to run through the chat. So if you haven't done so already, please hit that thumbs up button, comment where you're watching this from. Any questions, comments, concerns, anything you have, put it in the chat as it relates to what we're talking about in this particular video. Um, is that, believe it or not, if you have a criminal record, Right. And you feel like I don't know a lot. I don't have a lot of money. Right. The same character traits that instilled in you the confidence or the willingness to do whatever you did. Uh, and again, I'm not justifying what you did. I'm also not trying to condemn what you did. It is what it is. That's not for me to decide. Right. You, if you apply that same mentality to legitimate entrepreneurship, you're going to outcompete people who have more money than you, believe it or not, right? And people that have more knowledge than you, right? I feel that my brand, my businesses, they do well not because I spend more money or have more money than other people in my niche, right? I just find that I'm more confident in lots of areas. A lot of my marketing is organic. Like I'm not even using paid traffic for, well, I'm not using it at all for anything related to this YouTube channel, but even with my other businesses, it's not a lot of paid marketing going on. It's just having the courage to test things and try different things out and applying these different traits uh, that I'm sharing with you guys here that I believe a lot of you, again, if you are somebody with a criminal record or you know a loved one who has a criminal record, they have similar qualities as these that we're talking about here. So the next point that I have is that they understand the importance of self-taught learning. They understand the importance of self-taught learning. I think that successful entrepreneurs are lifelong learners, right? Uh, I have been guilty of it, uh, as many of you uh, who have who will watch this video, I'm sure, who uh, after school are saying, you know what, I'm not going to learn anything else. I'm not going to read any more books. And for many of us, that's because um, the relationship that has been built between us and learning has not been a positive relationship, right? We went to school, we read books that didn't interest us, and then had to take tests based off of a book that didn't interest us, and then that test determined how smart or lack thereof we are. So for a lot of people, especially those of us who come from low income uh, environments, they don't think of reading as something that's pleasant to do, right? They think of watching TV as something more pleasant to do or any outdoor activities. So uh, that's why the average American uh, reads four or less books an entire year right of uh, four or less books an entire year so if you read five books a year you're already exceptional as far as your literacy goes when it comes to reading books um but i believe that they understand the importance of being self-taught uh because there's going to be some things that you're going to have to learn on your own uh, i can tell you everything about how i started a, a successful independent courier service up in the maryland area transitioned it down to the Carolinas and then used the, the excess cash, if you will, to finance private label businesses, my first uh, eBay reselling inventory, my initial camera and setup for this YouTube channel, and so on and so forth. But if you are uh, a married man with six kids, right, maybe my blueprint and your blueprint 
won't be the exact same. If you're a female, maybe you can't follow my exact blueprint the same way that I followed it, right? There might be aspects of it that you can relate to and that you can apply to, but what I'm saying is that your life will be different than my life. So there's going to come a time where you have to understand that you're going to have to be self-taught. So yes, you can soak up game from other sources and you got to be willing to be a lifelong student of the game, right? That's what I consider myself to be now. So if you're somebody out there who doesn't like reading books and, uh, and again, uh, I'm giving you credit for eBooks and audio books. So, uh, I personally like reading traditional paperback books, but if, if you read eBooks, if you listen to audio books, uh, I'm grouping all of that together when I say read books, uh, for the purposes of this video, right? Um, understand that the reason why most people don't like reading books is because whether you're conscious or subconsciously aware of it is that the connotation that has been made, maybe your parents didn't value reading, right? Maybe your, your parents and grandparents, only thing that they really read was the Bible. And maybe you're not somebody who, who's interested in reading the Bible, right? Or maybe they didn't read anything at all. The only time you, you read or had to read anything was for school and that stuff didn't interest you. So now when you think about reading, you think about something that's boring and not interesting and not understanding that that is how you become super successful, right? Always self-educating yourself, not waiting for somebody to make a YouTube video on it and spell it out or not waiting for somebody to show up in your physical life and hold your hand from where you are all the way to completing your task. Uh, Two more forward thinking people, forward thinking people, right? The very best people with criminal records uh, have a good run, right? And there are, they might be somebody out there who is doing criminal things and uh, they don't have a record because they never got caught. I'm talking to you guys as well, you uh, men and women, right? As well, who, who may fit in that category, but being a forward thinking person, right? The the best time to prepare for war is during times of peace, right? Many of you guys know I'm a Marine Corps veteran, right? Serve honorably overseas during a time of war, blah, 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 right? But uh, uh, the takeaway is, is the best time to think about you needing money is when you don't need money, right? There are so many people that reach out to me that say, I need to make $1,200 today, $1,200 by Friday, uh, $500 by this time, uh, within the next couple days, or my lights getting cut off my rent or whatever the case may be. So you have to be a forward thinking person. And a lot of people that have criminal records, they have to some degree, right? If you were any good at it, a forward thinking mentality, right? Thinking ahead. Okay. What logically will I need to expand my business legitly? Right? Okay. I will need more money. If I know I would need more money because I want a warehouse or I want a storefront or I want to uh, have excess profit to invest in the real estate or do whatever it is, then you will develop your marketing campaign now based off of, okay, I need excess cash flow in the future. So maybe right now you sitting pretty decent on money, but by being a forward thinking person, okay, six months to a year from now, this is not going to be enough. So what can I do now before I really need the money to set myself up, right? That is what differentiates, in my opinion, the entrepreneurs who have a good run and those who just, they make a little money here and there. And then as soon as life hits them, because life will hit us all, right? As soon as life hits them, uh, things start to fall apart for them, right? And last thing I have for you here is uh, you watching this video. Right. So this is why people with criminal workers going to become the best entrepreneurs. Uh, what it means uh, for those of you that are watching this video is that you're entrepreneurially minded. Right. So whether somebody shared this video and you've seen it on Facebook or uh, they just text you the link to your phone, whatever they did, uh, it still was your choice to, to watch this video or not. And especially to make it all the way through to hear this point. So if you're entrepreneurially minded already, then it only makes sense for you to transition over and say, okay, what can I do uh, before something happens, right? Because in my opinion, it's not if something happens, it's when something happens. And your win might be 20, 30 years from now, right? But if you can transition over into something legitimate and profitable, and now 
that win never occurs because you're going to transition and legitimize your hustle. Or if you're somebody who's saying, you know, I'm at ground zero, what can I do to build myself up, right? You're entrepreneurially minded. And by remaining a student of the game, keeping that confidence, keeping that relentlessness, when somebody says, no, I'm not going to invest in your idea, you figure out a way to convince somebody else. Or if you can't convince anybody, right? I didn't convince anybody to help me start any of my initial businesses, right? You figure out a way to get the money yourself. So maybe you do multiple side hustles, multiple jobs, downgrade your lifestyle, right? These are things that I all uh, had to had to deal with. So, okay, you know, hey, this is a really nice BMW, but if you give that up, you can do this, right? And you in the vans all the time anyway. So, yeah, it's not cool to be in, in a white van and hear people clown you all the time about what the van looks like, but it's a short-term sacrifice to get to the point now where, uh, I never have to drive a van again. You know, I'm not above driving vans. Like I said, that's my favorite business. But I, I got to a place now where I never have to drive a van again. Right. Um. So appreciate all 69 people that's watching this live. Hit that thumbs up button. Comment where you're watching this from. Again, uh, like I said, this video may not be for everybody. What I wanted to talk or uh, who I wanted to talk to um, in this video are people like this gentleman that you see on the screen right now who uh, have a little something on their record, right, and still went on to become successful, right? So uh, you guys can follow him. Uh, his contact information is on the community tab with this same post. Also, those of you that follow me on Instagram uh, have seen this post already, uh, and I already read it two times in this video, so I'm not going to uh, right, keep on reading it over to you guys. I'm going to run through the live chat real quick, and then I'm going to let you guys go. So um, I'm scroll to the top. What's up, Corey B? Uh, what's up, Smart TV King? What's up, P. Holland? Right. Um, good morning, everyone. Right. What's up, your favorite hustler's favorite hustler? Right. Don't let that record stop you from grinding. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. You can't. Right. You can't let it stop you. You need to keep going uh, no matter what. Right. So keep that same energy uh, in spite of what other people tell you. Right. Don't think that the successful people that you know, uh, Whoever they are, people you know in your personal life, people you see on the internet, uh, even if I'm one of those people, you know, I'm grateful for that if you feel that way about me. But if not, whoever it is, right, don't think that they were never told no. Don't think that uh, the vast majority of us were, uh, did, were not born into money, right? So it, it wasn't like we got any head start that means that, okay, uh, JT could do this because JT dad left him a million dollars or, you know, or JT had all of this stuff that I didn't have. Right. So uh, your situation may have some nuances that are different from uh, my situation, but uh, anybody can do it. Right. Like I said, this is five plus years in the making. So if you have just now heard of me and it seems like I'm doing really good right now, right? Uh, this didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen in the last two years that I was a YouTuber, right? So this is a five plus year uh, process um, that, that I've been going into, right? Well, actually, matter of fact, my um, my oldest business, right, um, was started in 2014. So in 2014, so I think I'm really closer to like six years uh, was my very first business um, that I started. Um, what's up, Robert Sanders? What's up, Hard Fork Rich? Right. Um, that's what I had to because I had misdemeanors. Absolutely, man. No matter what, like, don't let anything stop you. Right. You can still be super successful. See some networking going on. Right. I just started another business since I was denied jobs. Uh, I have a staffing agency business. Right. That's dope. Yeah, I got a record taught myself programming, but it's hard to get a job if I can't get into this boot camp. Uh, I'm trying to, to join. I'm just going to go freelance. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, when it comes to programming, I know that uh, since I'm slowly learning tech, I know that programming could mean that you could program servers. You can do apps. You can do websites. So uh, I don't know specifically uh, what you're going to utilize your skill set for, but definitely going freelance, going the entrepreneur route, there's going to be a ton of opportunities available um, for you, right? Uh, shout out to Orlando, Florida, right? See some networking going on, people asking questions back and forth, 
right? I'm gonna jump around back and forth, right? All right, BX checking in, a gangster and a gentleman from felonies to business build on my brother, right? Absolutely. Uh, all right, cool. Um, oftentimes these people have no job choice because they uh, cannot just get the good job, right? So um, if you Google jobs for felons, right, jobs will come up, but I do agree with that statement. It's not necessarily the greatest jobs, right? It is a job. You can get a job. But it's not necessarily the greatest jobs out there. And even if you do get with a good company, right, they're not going to start you off at, you know, mid-level and then you start up. You're probably going to start off on the ground floor and then have to work your way up. And then how much time that takes really just depends on the company. So um, that's why I'm really big on pushing entrepreneurship. Right, really big on pushing entrepreneurship. Even though I know not everyone that's watching this video is going to go all in on entrepreneurship, I think everybody can have multiple streams of income, though at least two. Right, have at least two. So you got your nine to five job, and you got whatever your side hustle is. Because, like I always say, um, it may not be a pleasant ride or a pleasant fall, but if you're making a hundred grand and you fall all the way down to 10 grand because that's all your side hustle was bringing in, that's still a, a shorter fall than going from 100 grand to zero, right? So I believe everybody should have at least two income streams. So if you love your job, your job is one, plus, you know, whatever else is your second one, right? Um, Let me see. All right, people networking again, talking to each other. I'm going to jump around that. My brother just got out of prison. Uh, he and a friend owns three vans in less than a year. I tried to find opportunities on Craigslist per your video. Uh, put I see nothing and suggestions, right? Um, yeah, but I mean, I made a whole video on different things you could do with a van. So even if they don't decide to, to be independent couriers uh, or there aren't any independent courier opportunities in the area, if you have a cargo van, you can always make money. So there's a whole multitude of things you can do um, outside of just delivering freight. They can be a mobile anything business. So any business they want to do, they can be a mobile that business. But I have a whole video on this channel talking about uh, different different businesses that you guys can check out when you get a time. Different ways you can make money so you'll never go broke um, if you do have um, a cargo van. Also... Uh, what I want to tell you guys, for the benefit of the people that are new, the people that have been rocking with me for a while, um, already have seen this video. It came out eight months ago. Um, has a few views on it, 1,800 views. Appreciate everybody that already viewed it. But uh, 10 lessons from a drug dealer every legitimate entrepreneur should know. If you have not seen that video, I do want to encourage you guys, after watching this video, if you just search for that keyword uh, on my channel, it'll pop up. Um, or for those of you that have already seen it, you guys already know what the game is about on that. But um, I think between this video and that video, uh, it, it is going to help somebody who does have a criminal background and is looking to legitimize themselves, but are having trouble doing so, uh, find a way out of it, right? Definitely going to find a way out of it. Watching from North Carolina, have family looking to better themselves to become financially independent. Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Um, let me see. You jumped around, right? Yeah, you got to find your own dreams. See somebody talking about that, right? Um, looking at carrier and drop shipping. I already have a van, right? You don't even need a van to do drop shipping, uh, Queen Bubblicious. Um, I mean, I guess if you're going to have it come to you and you're going to deliver it yourself, but traditionally, you don't need a van to, to do drop shipping um, if that's what you're interested in doing. Um, let me see. Also, you can you do a uh, courier with the felony, right? I tell you, you can be a silent partner, right? You can own the business, um, but it's really up to the company. So I did a live video on this channel where we actually called a company and straight up asked them. And uh, I think they said maybe 10 years, if it's 10 or 15 years. But the uh, And that was related to if you have a DUI. Uh, a lot of companies, it depends on the nature of the felony, right? If, if it's a drug related felony and you want to deliver and you want to deliver something that's like federally regulated, like if you want to deliver pharmaceuticals and you went to prison and you were king for being a kingpin uh, and moving drugs all over the country and eh, they might not give you a shot. Right. Uh, if, if you're trying to be the butt in the seat 
right? But you don't have to be the butt in the seat to, to own the business, right? Uh, and again, like I said, uh, for those people who are not even interested in doing the courier business at all, um, I, I wrote the book. It's linked down below. Or you can just go to Amazon and type in JT Hustle's book, and you'll see uh, my courier book and this book uh, right here that's going to, uh, it's called The Key to Winning is Given. The Hustler's Guide to Go From Felling to Successful Legitimate Entrepreneur, right? So uh, it's going to be, that's what the cover looks like. Uh, so there's definitely opportunities for you. So just because somebody says you can't work here or I won't give you this contract because of your background, right? Uh, you don't take no for an answer, right? Everybody gets told no. So don't think just because you have a felony, that's why people are telling you no, because there are people without felonies that still get told no for other reasons. So uh, I say that to say that um, don't think that uh, you're the only person getting told no and there's no way for you to overcome it. Right. So you can definitely overcome your situation. Right. Let me see. Keep up the good work. Appreciate that. Right. I'm getting the book, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, let me see. All right, let me see. Shout out to Orlando again in the building. All right, appreciate the game. Let me see. All right, nut working going on. I'm gonna jump around. Um, if you have a van, truck, a large car, check with your local floors. Many are hiring independent contractors for Valentine's Day, uh, Valentine's deliveries. Uh, all right, network for Mother's Day hustles. All right, you absolutely right about that, P. Holland. Um. There's a company in my area called Edible Arrangements. I don't know if they're nationwide or, you know, I don't know how big the company is, but in the Carolinas, it does exist. Um, but like you said, any florist or any shop related to that in your area, um, usually they do have an influx of orders around these sorts of holidays like Mother's Day, Valentine's Day and stuff like that. And somebody um, out there might want. Uh, their sweetheart to get a big bear and flowers and whatever it is uh, delivered to their job or wherever for Valentine's Day. So there are companies out there that do do it. It is seasonal work, but it, it can put uh, some extra dollars in your pocket. And also, uh, we're, we're uploading this video on the 10th of February. So if that's something you want to do, you need to jump on that ASAP, right? Because Valentine's Day is right around the corner, right? Um Right, first live with you love your content. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Um, all right, so people talking about drop shipping again. If you guys want to check that out, um, I'm gonna jump around the networking. You guys can go uh, check out the networking. Like I, I firmly believe that my followers are leaders, right? So I'm not the smartest person uh, that's a part of this platform, right? So the JT Hustles brand is, is it wouldn't be anything without you guys viewing the content, sharing the content, showing your support in the various ways. Um, so I, I want to highly encourage you guys to look in the in the top chat. We got people talking about drop shipping. We got uh, people talking about staffing agency businesses. Uh, so I give you guys a live answer about questions that you ask me directly, but it also goes down in the live chat if somebody makes a comment and uh, you guys can see it beside me as well on the screen. Um, but if you can't see it because it's too small on whatever device you're looking at, um, you guys can make it bigger uh, by just selecting the live chat option uh, on your device. Right? How much is the book for felons? It's uh, $29.99 um, on Amazon. Right? Springfield, Ohio. Right. Absolutely. I love self-taught learning. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. I actually failed um, like a basic IT class in college. Right. Um, but it was too fast paced for me. So for many years, I thought that I wasn't smart enough to get into tech um, because, you know, I took the class. I failed the class. But now I'm learning that uh, the same stuff that I failed to understand while I was taking that course super easy now super easy when they talking about concatenation uh it really comes down to when you're self-taught right you're going to find how you learn best and then you're going to teach yourself um whatever way 
works best for you to understand it. So a teacher might have a teaching style that this is what they prefer, but you don't really get it like that, right? Maybe you need flashcards. Maybe you need pictures. You need some kind of visual representation. Uh, maybe you just need to go over it over and over and over again and, until you finally get it, right? So by being self-taught, uh, what you will learn is that the stuff that you didn't think you were smart enough to learn, you really just didn't have a good teacher, right? So going through the school system as well, uh, I wasn't very strong when it came to math. So I shied away from the harder math classes. But as an entrepreneur, going back and understand the importance of math, and even now that I'm getting into real estate, um, there's a lot of measurements and understanding weight distribution and stuff like that. If you want to take out a load bearing wall and all of that stuff, there's some numbers involved and math involved and all of that. And realizing that if you have the right teacher, it's easy. And when you are the teacher teaching yourself, then, of course, you're going to teach yourself the best way possible. Right. So uh, believe it or not, you can go back into whatever uh, subject you hated the most when you were in school, whether it was college, grade school or whatever. And if you go back through it and say, I'm going to teach myself in a way that I understand it'll be, it'll come easier to you, right? Now, I'm not saying that I'm a technological wizard or a math genius, but I am saying that uh, it's no longer intimidating to me and I do have a foundational understanding of that subject matter. And if you apply uh, the same uh, to whatever your business is, right, then you'll learn that, hey, this is not as difficult as, as I thought, right? This big drop shipping thing uh, is not as overwhelming or as impossible to do as I once thought uh, that it would be right um cincinnati ohio is in the building right um right add some value on drop shipping suppliers all right yeah you guys so i do got to catch up on my my dms uh and my facebook messages so after this live stream i am gonna go back through it so if you have dm me on instagram or you sent me a message through facebook uh you guys will get um a response back here shortly before I jump into uh, what I got to jump into for the rest of the day. Right? Yeah, when you learn something on your own, it's just totally different feeling. I can't even explain it. Absolutely, Smart TV King, right? So, um, like, learning how to... And it can be something simple. Like, this design that you're looking at right now, um, I made everything myself, right? So, the, the whole cutout screen, the stuff you see underneath me putting the live chat beside me, right? So something simple like this um, is, is very basic to do, but the sense of pride that you'll get from, okay, I, I figured out how to do this on my own, right? Even from uh, the, the being able to transition and make your live streams look like a pre-recorded video or however you want to uh, view it as, right? So, and, and you can do this to anything, so whatever business that you want to start, I'm just using simple examples uh, for those of you that are watching this video now. You can figure it out on your own. Uh, even down to when I tell people, if you're going to invest in a course in Hustle Academy, right? If you're not a member of Hustle Academy, go check out Hustle Academy. That's when uh, I'm going to break it down in a more formal setting and we give you the step-by-step -step blueprint how to make money in different businesses, uh, adding courses. Well, I'm editing courses now uh, and I'm going to announce them once they're finished. Uh, and that's what Hustle Academy is. But whether you take a course in Hustle Academy or buy my books, right? Um, I'm one of the few people, if uh, if you know anybody else that's doing it, let me know. But I admittedly tell people that I'm not selling you information because I believe given enough time, you can figure out anything you want to uh, in life, right? So uh, it's not that I'm selling you information that you can never, ever find out if you spend X amount of time that could be months, weeks, years, just depending on you to figure out on your own uh, is it's selling time. So you can definitely learn stuff on your own. It is a totally different feeling. And yeah, I, mean, I want to encourage everybody to do it. Right. Many people retain and absorb info quicker by visual or physical learning versus reading. Yeah. So definitely just however you learn. Right. Me, I find it that I retain information better by doing this. Uh, and that's just me personally. If I watch a video, I think that me consciously or maybe subconsciously knowing that I could just go back uh, to a timestamp and revisit whatever I missed kind of makes me not really 
uh, value the information as far as like I take it for granted to retain it in my long term memory. Right. Same thing with a podcast. I could go back to whatever that time is. But if I read a book. Right. Especially one of my books that don't have page numbers, uh, then I'm, I'm forced to retain that knowledge um, out there. Right. Or even if I do mark the page, I, it's still more engaging for me. Right. It, it takes a little bit more effort to physically read the book and then retain the knowledge. But if you learn differently, I'm not saying my way is any better than your way. Right. I, what I am saying is learn what way you best learn and then apply that uh, to your system to become a lifelong learner. Right. Right. I started my own live TV streaming service when everyone said it could not be done. Uh, if I would have listened to them, I would still be in the same situation as them. So shout out to you, Smart TV King. Right. For doing that. That's because people with criminal records are not given a fair chance and they're forced to go to alternative means of generating. Uh, OK, it jumped up on me. Give me one second to find out where we was. Uh, way of life. A lot of times they become very successful at it right so regardless of why you know what i mean regardless of how you get to this point uh i just don't want you to think that you're limited by your life experience whatever they were right especially if they're negative appreciate all 69 people that's watching this live hit that thumbs up button comment where you're watching this from uh we already ran through the formal part of the video i'm just kicking game in the live stream with you guys now and uh i apologize if you guys hear everybody calling my phone but uh like i said got a lot of moving parts going on on this monday today um right you have to believe in yourself and step out on faith absolutely absolutely um let me see um okay all right networking going on like i said i'm gonna jump over that for the sake of time shout out to southern california right i need to uh add cleaning out vacant houses to my line of work right absolutely Right, if you have the right equipment, a uh, van, truck, or whatever, it is simple. Right, Arlington, Texas. Shout out to Thomas White. Right, being in here. Um, right, thank you for the knowledge. No problem. Right, I'm so glad I caught a glimpse of this. Right, appreciate you for being here. Uh, Nick Pick Thrift. Right, thank you for the content. Um, thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, Lorraine, uh, I'm gonna mess up your last name. Right, I ain't even gonna try to butcher it like that. Um, JT has great info whether you catch it live or replay let's keep getting knowledge from this young brother keep feeding us absolutely man and I want you guys to know that man um, like I said before I'll say it again man my father was a leader so a lot of you guys are smart a lot of you guys are in businesses that I never even heard of right I haven't heard of every business out there and uh, there's a lot of people that follow me that make six figures uh, people that follow me that make seven figures that I've talked to Right. So um, I don't want this channel to be all about, you know, JT so smart. Come listen to everything you got to say. I'll be the first one to tell you that there's a lot of things that I don't know. Um, what I do know, I try to share with you guys. And beyond that, uh, I try to document things as I learn them. So uh, I'm going to be going back out to the house in the next coming weeks and just documenting how, how that process goes. Right. So we put a new roof on it. The demo is 90 plus percent done. Uh, now it's just time to clean out. Uh, the house and, and slowly start putting stuff back together and uh, redeveloping uh, a house. So our first rental property. So this channel uh, hopefully will educate, inspire and motivate you to do something entrepreneurial, uh, either stuff that I know that I teach you or you might learn from my mistakes. Like uh, I made the mistake of leaving stuff uh, locked inside of my house. Right. It wasn't secure to any physical structure i just thought i could lock the door and nobody's gonna bother it because it's an empty house and hey now hopefully before you invested in your first rental property you know that okay maybe it's not enough just to leave stuff locked into, inside your house talking about tools um when you're doing a renovation maybe you want to take them with you or if there's a way that you can secure them to the floor to the wall to a stud whatever uh to, to make it uh so people can't just break in your house and steal all uh, whatever it is that you like to leave in there. So, best friend stuck in China at the moment, right? I right, sorry to hear that. Definitely sorry to hear that, man. Hope they make it back. You have got to be consistent at everything you do. You're absolutely right, Lorraine. Nick Johns is uh, JT. I tried to contact you about the box truck, 
right? I need to talk to you how we can talk one on one, right? So you can do you can schedule a consultation down below if you want to talk one on one specifically about whatever business you want to do. Um, I'm also JT Hustles on all social media platforms, uh, so Facebook, Instagram. I'm JT Hustles there as well, right? Uh, one hundred it happened uh, to me in April nineteen. Thank God I had a side hustle, right? Um, so yeah, Urban uh, Interpreter two four seven. Yeah, I think that's in reference to, you know, uh, sometimes things outside of your control can uh, can impact not only your business, but uh, your nine to five as well. Right. So that's why I'm a firm believer in multiple streams of income, because something may happen where it negatively impacts the nature of how you do business for whatever reason. Uh, you have a little bit more control, I think, in your own business than if you have in a nine to five job, because in a nine to five job, you can be a great worker for X amount of years. And if the powers that be on the highest level decide that we need to switch directions and now you no longer fit into that new direction, hey, they, they give you notice that, hey, we're no longer going to need your services. Right. Whereas you're never going to fire yourself when it comes to being an entrepreneur. Uh, you might learn that, OK, uh, this way is not going to work anymore. Um, so we got to do something differently and you will just have to grow and adjust. And that's something that all entrepreneurs struggle with, which is why uh, I'm going to make a marketing course for Hustle Academy. But um, the thing that I'm struggling with, uh, again, I'm, I'm being fully transparent with you guys, is that I know full well. That it's kind of like a magician revealing how to do the magic trick. Like it, it takes away the effectiveness of it next time. Meaning that if I show you how to market, right, how it works now, the people that get in early will make a lot of money. But once everybody is doing it, then the profit margins start to shrink. Right. And that's true into all kind of marketing. Right. Email marketing still works. It's not as effective as it was when it was the hottest thing out, when it was the newest thing out and people were reading entire emails. Right. Now it's people that might not even open up the email. But believe it or not, when email was first out and hot and I got older mentors. Right. So don't think that, you know, I was an entrepreneur quite that long when email first came out. But um, I got a lot of mentors who remember that. And uh, marketing just changes over time, right? Um, so uh, you have to understand that you'll never fire yourself in business, but you might have to change how you do stuff. And I just talk about marketing because that's just one aspect of it that'll be universal. So the way you make money today might have to be tweaked, right? Might have to be tweaked. And unfortunately, I see a lot of mom and pop businesses um, going out uh, of business because they don't want to tweak their business model, right? Exactly. You usually jobs that are lower paying, no benefits, etc. I keep pushing your videos to my son. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, lead us up. I missed over half the points. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it up. I'm gonna leave the whole video up. Encourage you guys to check out um the the live chat as well. Engineering cannabis. Uh, talk to people with cannabis crime. How it can be expunged and also get into the cannabis business. Right. With the record. Right. So um, engineering cannabis does have a YouTube channel. I had him featured on this channel um, in the past, I think a couple of times at least. And um, depending on his schedule and my schedule, he may be on a future video as well. But if you guys are interested in uh, starting a legitimate cannabis business, um, engineering cannabis is in the chat. You guys can go check him out as well. Right. Um, right. Michigan in the house. Right. Okay, uh, okay, we'll do what about email as well? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Email marketing, um, it used to work, right? It used to work. JT, you know about sneaker resale? Yeah, yeah, I used to do it heavily. Um, and then uh, that's another example. I restructured, right? Because I was in the Jordan, Jeezy, all of that. But then um, I was, I'm going to call it pre bot. So before there was bots out that could give you the advantage of buying up sneakers instantaneously uh, and everybody, or at least we thought everybody was manually buying shoes and you had a fair chance of getting them. Uh, we was coming up with strategies to either camp out, wait in line, get those, buy them online, whatever, and resell them. But then once they came out with bots and everybody got into it, um, I actually uh, targeted a different market. So now I'm targeting uh, a market of people who they are into sneakers, but they not, it don't got to be the new Jordans, the new Yeezys, uh, the new anythings, really. Um, they just want nice sneakers at a fair price. Um, so, man, 
I make a killing buying and reselling Bo Jacksons, Air Maxes, right? Picking them up um, from different areas, brand new condition, uh, like your Ross TJ Maxes, Marshalls, things of that nature, and shipping them all over the United States. And I even ship some out of the country, right? Shot Town in the house, right? Let me see. Jumping around. All right, people giving good game as well. Uh, in the chat, check it out when you get a chance. Right. Um, let me see. Cool, cool. Detroit in the building. Right. Uh, Smart TV King talking about uh, his own streaming service. Right. Um, reach out to me too, Smart TV King, if you want to come on the show and tell people about that business as well. Because that's, like I said, that's a business that, uh, that you know, I haven't even... Um, I haven't even thought of like starting your own streaming service. Um, yep, he's a solid dude, man. Just hoping everything works out for him as me as well. Me as well. Shout out to St. Louis in the building. Uh, thanks for being a ray of light in this dark world, Mr. JT. Again, appreciate y'all tuning in. Right. Um, uh, how did I miss your Marine Corvette Simplify? Yeah, man. It's a. Uh, I, I think I don't talk about it as much, you know what I mean? Because um it just just don't, right? But um yeah, man, served in the Marine Corps. Uh it was the best and worst of times, man. So appreciate that. But that's all I have for you guys. Again, um check out the live chat. If you're missing this and you gotta watch the replay, uh put your comment down below. I'll try to get you an answer as soon as possible. If you sent me a message on Facebook or Instagram, I'm gonna reply back to you. Um, here in a few moments, I'm going to return these phone calls that you may have heard buzzing while we're doing this live stream. But until next time, to all my hustlers, stay hustling. JT Hustles, I'm gone. I choose not to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. I prefer the challenges of life to the guarantee existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the stale calm of utopia. I will never cower before any master, nor bend to any threat. It's my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid, to face the world boldly and say, this I have done.